Hello everyone, and welcome once again to Caleb Lace Books. I am Caleb, and today I am going to be reviewing a box set, which is not something that I have done before, so you'll be kind of getting multiple reviews in one. And today I'm going to be reviewing the Arcturus Necronomicon box set. And the reason why I am reviewing um, these five books uh, that come in this box set this way is that um, based on uh, like Goodreads, for example, um, and even just what I see when I go into the bookstore uh, where I found this, which is Books A Million, um, there are other, like, certain ones of these are pretty common to find by itself, like The Call of Cthulhu and Other Stories by H.P. Lovecraft. I have seen by itself, uh, for sale, um, and some of these, like, on Goodreads actually have reviews for these specific editions, but other ones do not, and I don't actually see these, um, for sale individually. Um, however, I have seen multiples of this box set available, so if you are potentially interested in picking this up and getting all five of these uh, short story collections, then um, I figured I would talk about it, because I recently read four of these and uh, the Lovecraft one I read a couple of months ago, um, and so I thought I would review the whole thing so you can kind of get five reviews in one. So first I'll go over what each of these five are. So first you have The Call of Cthulhu and Other Stories by H.P. Lovecraft. You have The Black Seal and Other Stories by Arthur Macon, I believe is how his last name is pronounced. Um, you have Yuki Ona and Other Stories by Lafcadio... Uh, Hearn, again, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I'm trying. The Haunter of the Ring and Other Stories by Robert E. Howard. And The Yellow Sign and Other Stories by Robert W. Chambers. And real quick before I talk about each of the individual books, I just want to talk about the box because I think it's cool. You get this really neat um, Cthulhu artwork um, on it that looks very, very nice. Um, and it is on, you know, every side of the box. Um, and on it, it says the Necronomicon, Tales of Eldritch Horror from the Masters of the Genre. Um, and then it has the four um, other authors on it. And then at the bottom in big letters, it has H.P. Lovecraft because the Necronomicon is something that was invented by H.P. Lovecraft for his stories. And uh, this box that is kind of inspired by his work. Um, so obviously that's going to be the big name on there. And he's also probably the most popular one, I would say. Um, so it's a really cool box. Typically with box sets, um, I don't usually keep the boxes unless they have really cool, unique artwork like this. A lot of the time it might just be like the art directly taken from uh, the book covers or something like that. And this is completely unique artwork. So I really like this box. And now I'm going to actually talk about the books that you get in here. And I'm going to talk about them in the order that I read them. So first, of course, is The Call of Cthulhu and Other Stories by Lovecraft. Um, I really enjoy Lovecraft's work. Um, so, of course, his was the first one that I read. Um, and uh, this comes with a decent number of stories. So maybe about a dozen or so stories in here. Uh, including uh, The Call of Cthulhu, obviously, um, The Festival, The Rats in the Walls, Herbert West Reanimator, and a handful of other ones. A uh, decent selection of stories here. Some of them take place in the Cthulhu mythos, some of them don't. And unfortunately, even though I am a big fan of a lot of Lovecraft's work, this specific collection of stories didn't really land for me. Not that there weren't some good stories in it, like The Call of Cthulhu, I mean, it's a classic Lovecraft story that if you know Lovecraft, you know that story. And I also did enjoy Herbert West Reanimator and The Hound. Um, the festival, I think, was pretty good. History of Necronomicon is all right. But then there are some other ones that just didn't quite land for me, like The Horror at Red Hook, which I honestly could not tell you a single thing about. I thought it was entirely forgettable. Um, the Nameless City is okay. The Working Fear is okay. There's, like, I think this uh, collection ranges basically from really mediocre to having one or two really great stories. It's a decent one to read if you are new to Lovecraft. Of course, it does include The Call of Cthulhu, which is probably his most popular story, along with a decent selection of other stories, so you can kind of see if you're into his style. But um, overall, this one is not actually my favorite um, out of this box set, which is surprising to me. If I were to give this uh, specific book a rating, it would probably be like a 6 or 6.5 out of 10, something like that. It had a couple of really good stories in it, but overall it just didn't quite land for me for a lot of them. Next one up is going to be The Yellow Sign and Other Stories by 
um, Robert W. Chambers. There's two Roberts in here, so I get kind of confused between the two of them. Um, this is one of the authors that uh, Lovecraft was inspired by. Um, this box set is kind of focusing around Lovecraft and some authors that are similar to him and stuff. Uh, Robert E. Howard, who did uh, Haunter of the Ring and other stories, um, was a direct contemporary of his. He actually worked with Lovecraft, um, whereas the other three, or at least two of them, are people who inspired Lovecraft. I'm not sure if uh, Lovecati O'Hearn, who did the Yuki Ona and other stories, which I'll talk about last because I just finished it today, um, I'm not sure if that person was a direct inspiration on Lovecraft or not, but uh, at the very least, um, uh, Robert W. Chambers and Arthur Macken were both uh, inspirations on Lovecraft, um, which you can definitely see with this particular one. Uh, for example, um, the city of Carcosa is mentioned, which is a creation of this author, uh, which is actually something that Lovecraft himself mentioned, and there are some connections between um, the King in Yellow and Haster from uh, Lovecraft's mythos and things like that. Um, but uh, again, unfortunately, this one didn't really work for me, and I actually would consider this my least favorite out of the five. Uh, I would probably give this one like a four out of ten. Um, and the main reason for that is there were really like two things in here that I actually enjoyed, um, of which there are, again, about a dozen. Um, I thought In the Court of the Dragon, uh, which is one of the stories in here, was really, really good. I really enjoyed that one a lot. And I also thought The Mask was a decent story as well. But the rest of them just didn't really land for me. And I think part of the reason for that is that uh, quite a few of the stories in here, like a third of the stories in here, aren't even really horror, which is fine. Um, I enjoy stuff that isn't horror. In fact, that's the majority of what I read. But uh, when I get a box set that implies you're going to get horror stories... It was kind of disappointing to get a lot of uh, kind of more historical fiction or something uh, along those lines. Stuff that didn't really feel like it fit in with everything else. And I just didn't find that stuff as interesting, unfortunately. So this one didn't, again, quite land for me, and I actually uh, liked it less than The Call of Cthulhu and other stories. But uh, thankfully, the other collections here I enjoyed more than both of these, I would say, so... Um, this one is probably my least favorite, though. And next is The Hunter of the Ring and Other Stories by Robert E. Howard, who is, um, in addition to being a contemporary Lovecraft's, is also known for, uh, his Conan the Barbarian stories, which I believe he actually, uh, created. Um, so if you are familiar with those stories, I believe this guy is the one who wrote them. Um, and that does actually play into one or two of the stories in here, but it's not really a focus or anything. Um... This is probably, next to The Yellow Sign and Other Stories, I would say is the most varied um, short story collection that is in this box set. Um, you get a couple of stories in here that are actually directly included within the Cthulhu mythos. Um, for example, one of them, which I'm probably going to butcher the name of, is The Fire of Asherbanapple. Asherbanapple. As Herb and Apple, the fire of it's Herb and Apple. I hope I'm saying that right. That is directly um, connected to Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos, and I loved that story. It is probably one of my favorite Cthulhu Mythos stories that I have read thus far. Um, so there are a couple of Cthulhu Mythos stories within this book. There's also a couple of more traditional horror stories. Uh, the very first two short stories in here are werewolf stories, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, there's a few other that are... Uh, a few other stories that are just kind of more just weird horror stories that are um, maybe not like directly like Cthulhu mythos-esque or Lovecraftian-esque in the typical uh, what you would think of as connecting to those, but um, they do certainly fit, I think. Uh, there's even a couple of ones here that are a little bit more fantastical, maybe a little more mythological. There's one that directly ties into, like, Norse mythology and stuff. So, along with, like, the yellow sign, this one was quite varied, but I think the difference between the two and why I vastly preferred this one, Ed would actually probably uh, consider this my favorite of the five. Um, I would give this, like, an, a pretty, I think, strong 8 out of 10. Um is um, this one is basically all like horror stories or ones that have a uh, non-realistic um, twist to them in some way. 
Um, the Yellow Sign and other stories had some of the more historical stories, and I can enjoy, like, a story that is just set in the real world, but a story that includes some fantastical or weird element to it that is not as realistic is immediately going to hook me more than something that is entirely realistic or historical. Um, and so I think that's what really worked for me with this one. Plus, I just liked the stories in general a lot more in this one. Next one up is The Black Seal and Other Stories by Arthur Macon, or Mackin, or however it's pronounced. I'll probably be alternating them because I'm can't I'm not sure which it actually is. Um, this is the one with the least number of short stories in it. It has a grand total of seven compared to the dozen-ish or more that are in all of the other ones, and Yugi Ono and other stories actually has a ton of short stories in it. Um, but this has by far the fewest, um, so, um, you know, you're not getting as many stories in here, but they're all of, I think, a relatively similar length for the most part. This one, um, is the one that, out of all of them, I have the least strong feelings about, I think. Um, the stories in here were not great, they were not bad, they were just generally, like, you know, I read this and I put it down and I was like, that was a decently enjoyable read, you know, it wasn't anything that I loved, it wasn't anything I hated, it was just, those were fine. Um, and unfortunately that's basically all I have to say about it. Um, and there were, I think the standout story in here is probably The White People, which is a story title that I find endlessly amusing for some reason. Um, but, uh, that is probably my favorite story in here, but really it's not even my favorite in a significant margin. Um, I just think all the stories in here were all about equally decent, and that's really it. And so as far as a rating for this one, it'd probably be like a 7 out of 10, because for me that's kind of the, you know, it's good, not great, not, it's above average, but it's not necessarily something that I loved or um, something that I'm going to be itching to reread or anything like that. Um, so I think a 7 out of 10, something like that, is a fair score for this one for me at least. And last, and certainly not least, we have Yuki Ona and Other Stories by Lafcadio Hearn. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, this is the shortest, uh, bunch of short stories in here by a significant margin. This, uh, one is about 190 pages. But funnily enough, it includes by far the largest number of short stories. Um, the thing is, a lot of them are just really, really, really short. Uh, a lot of them are only a handful of pages long, uh, which was very interesting. It, it kept me reading at kind of a quick pace. I actually got through this book today in its entirety. Uh, it took me, you know, two and a half-ish hours, maybe. Um, I just kind of went through the whole thing, um, because it was just a bunch of really short, bite-sized stories. Uh, I was just like, oh, I'll keep going, you know what I mean? Um, and that was really cool about it, and also what I really liked about it is, um, that it was very different from the other ones. Um, this does generally, I think, have a bit of a horror element to it, though I don't think as, it's necessarily as pronounced as some of the other ones. Um, it's more of just dark folk tales and legends and things of that nature um, uh, that are particularly inspired by Japanese culture, which was super interesting. Um, none of the other ones were, I think, in any way inspired by Japanese culture, as far as I could tell, so it was really interesting to get something like this. Um, there's some, like, kind of ghost stories in here, some stuff about uh, folklore and stuff like that, and it was actually one of my favorites in this collection. I'd probably say it's my second favorite behind The Haunter of the Ring and other stories. Um, I really enjoyed this one, and it was the one that I probably least expected to enjoy because, um, it had the more Japanese folklore aspect to it, and I was like, oh, it sounds not super, like, Lovecrafty because that's kind of why I got this box set is because it had Lovecraft attached to it, and I that's what I wanted out of it, um, and this is not really like that, but I really enjoyed it even despite that, um, so yeah, I think this one is alongside, um, The Haunter of the Ring for me as a strong, like, 8 out of 10. Again, kind of like, uh, The Black Seal and other stories, not really any stories in here particularly stood out to me, but I think in general it was just a really enjoyable read that I wanted to keep going, 
and it was just fun to read. So um, definitely did enjoy this one. So my overall thoughts on this Necronomicon box set is sort of mixed to positive, I would say. I would say it's generally like a decent box set, um, kind of averaging out all of the scores that I gave. I'd probably give it like a six and a half out of ten, maybe a seven. It's a decent collection of a bunch of short stories by a bunch of authors um, that I did generally enjoy, even though I didn't necessarily love every single short story that I read. Um, as someone who has not read a whole lot of horror, um, and especially uh, has not read a lot of more classic stories, you know, these largely were written uh, a century ago or more. Um, so that was a very unique experience for me, and I am very glad to have read these for those reasons. Um, but it just didn't quite land for me a lot of the stories in here, particularly, as I said, in The Yellow Sign and other stories, um, and to a lesser degree The Call of Cthulhu and other stories. But I would still recommend getting this box set if you are interested in, like, classic horror, um, and a decent variety of different stories that you can read. As I said earlier, some of them are very much Lovecraftian, some of them are directly tied to the Cthulhu mythos, other ones are more ghost stories, some of them are more, um, folk tales, some of them are just traditional kind of, uh, horror legends that have been told for a very long time. Other ones are just weird and unusual, other ones are very historical, all this stuff. It's a very nice variety of horror stories, so I would definitely recommend, if this box set sounds at all interesting to you, I would recommend getting it. Um, I just think that for me personally, I did not love it or anything, but I am glad to have gotten it and to have read all of these stories. It was definitely an interesting experience for me. But anyways, that is pretty much all I've got for you, so let me know down in the comments if you uh, have this box set or if you have read any of the stories by these various authors, and if you have, let me know what you think of them, if you agree with my thoughts on uh, these authors' stories or if you disagree or whatever. And that is pretty much all I got for you for this video, so thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.